Hi everyone, it's Christy. Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to start working on our paper bag series and I'm so excited. Um, the first one I want to start with is the not so paper bag clutch with the little journal inside and the inspiration for this one comes from Susie over at Creative Cafe Girl. I will leave her link below. I know um, some other people have done this. I think she said she got it from the Firefly Studio 67 and um, I've seen a couple other people doing it but it looked like a lot of fun so I have these little cheap bags these are the giant ones now the giant ones will make a bag this size now this is my prototype so don't pay attention to the ugly stitching because I haven't changed my thread yet but where's my ruler this comes out approximately 10 and an eighth and four and a quarter that way um, this fold here is right at four and I just did this so I could see how to fold it now if you don't like things getting all wrinkly and kind of distorted this is probably not the project for you because these paper bags are not perfect they're made by machine it's a very lightweight paper so as you can see there's there's not a lot of straight anything these corners are wonky and so anyway um, but I wanted to see how this worked out so this one comes out like I said a little over 10 by 4 and a quarter um, so the journal that we would probably about a three quarter of an inch over hey um, what do you call that kind of a spine but overhang this is an overhang. I don't know. You know what I mean. This is about three quarters of an inch. And then this part down here is two inches. So that's how I folded it. Two inches, three quarter of an inch, and then I just folded up the bottom at four inches. And so the journal will probably have to be like, well, probably four by nine I wouldn't go over four by nine maybe four by eight would fit better um, and very flat not very many pages at all um, now I did so along the bottom you don't have to do that because but it does make it very sturdy um, I love the sound of it so I want I was kind of curious to see what size this one would come out to and so I just thought I'd just pull these sides out real quick. I think this one will come out to about eight. Yeah, this one will be a little bit smaller, maybe um, three by eight, but we're not gonna mess with that one today. Um, we're gonna mess with the large one. So um, the first thing I wanna do, I don't want this little edge here. So I am going to trim off a quarter of an inch and that is all that I'm going to be cutting on this one. Actually, three eighths. Let's do three eighths of an inch here. And that gives me a nice clean edge um, so I don't have to tuck anything in or fold anything over. It's nice and straight and I don't have to worry about anything getting snagged on that little tuck um, thumb hole. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna open this bag. Completely. And when I did this the first time, I just kind of stuck both my hands in here and pulled it out and then refolded. But I watched somebody yesterday, and I, oh, I can't remember who it was, but she came up here like this, folded this back because that's the original line, and then how did she do that? She kind of tucked tucked this in. I should have tried this ahead of time. But if you tuck... No, that's not right. Oh. Either way, you gotta pull these sides out. And you wanna do it along the original line. Um, although, look, if you can see, this one has two lines. So it's not perfect. 
So let's line these up. We'll be going with this line here. And I just want to press that down. I'm going to make it look a lot harder than it actually is because that's my way. <laughs> Do the same on the other side. I want to come up here where this where this point is right here and that's where my line is going to start because that's going to be the corner of our top. So let's lay that down. Okay. So once we get this um, pulled out, we want to have it on the side that has the natural fold down. We want this piece to come out like so. And you can, so um, just want to pull these out. And I kind of use my bone folder a little bit. And I go back inside there and kind of poke this out really carefully. You don't want to poke a hole in it, but you can see where my bone folder is. I want, I want this to come out. We're basically doing the opposite of the original fold. Same over here. And just kind of tug on it a little bit from this corner. And you may have to redo the lines because it's not straight or whatever. But, um, you know, you can make it as perfect as you want. You don't have to, um, you don't have to live with, with, with it if you don't want to. So, all right. So I'm just going to pull that, pull that. And you can see as you work with it, it, it gets a little, a little straighter. But it's not going to be perfect. Little by little. There we go. I'm not too worried about this because this is going to be folded up. But I do want to make sure that this here is the shape that I want for my flap. So I'm just going to flatten that down a little bit. It helps going into the sewing machine if it's nice and flat. Otherwise, it will kind of buckle up more. So, okay, then we're going to fold this piece back up. Okay, now I am going to glue this piece down before we decoupage. Okay, we are going to be decoupaging this bag. Okay, you can see right now it's about 12 by that 10 and a quarter. Okay, so I am going to glue this piece and I was really surprised how sturdy this is um, I know I've seen a lot of people doing these and, and I thought oh this is a fun project I love paper bags I love the sound of the crinkling bags so this is a perfect um, project for me. I have tons of paper. Um, I am going to be using the My Sweet Rose by Artie Mays for this one. Okay. Now, for the flap, we have this original line here. We're going to fold this down, and that's approximately two inches. Yep. Okay. Is it straight? Almost. Let's straighten that up just a smidge. I think it... There we go. That looks better. There we go. And then I want to come down about another... Let's see. Maybe like a three-quarter. I'm getting to where I can't see the dots on my... On my... Uh, mat anymore because... They are getting all yucky. Okay, so let's just use our bone folder to get a crease on both sides. And then we'll bring those together. Okay, so that's our flap. 
right there. Okay, now on the bottom piece, we want this to be four inches. So I'm just going to put my thumb here four inches from the bottom and fold this up. And the reason I'm doing this right now is because I want to know where to decoupage, um, where, which side is going to be right side up and which is not. Um, I am going to press this out this way because it does get air in it and the folds kind of change up a little bit. But as you can see, I'm going to want this piece facing me going, you know, the right way. I'm going to want this the right way. This is going to be the opposite. I want this to be the right way and I'm not really worried about the inside. But then when I flip it over, I want this to be the way, right way around. Also, okay, easier said than done. So, I have these papers from my Sweet Rose. So let's decide what we want to use there. Oh my gosh, that would be so pretty, wouldn't it? Um, I want to do the inside first. All of these pages are pretty. I can't say one is prettier than the other. So I think I'm going to do this one on the inside. So let's go this way. Uh, I'm going to want to go right to the edge, and I am going to decoupage this. Um, I'm going to, you know, adhere it, and then I'm going to seal it with Mod Podge. Um, let's see. I don't need to come all the way down. I only need to come down maybe, well, if we're going to look inside the pocket, I guess I should come most of the way, maybe to here. And then I'll tear that piece. Let's go on this line, that way I can keep it straight. I have it the wrong way. <laughs> you want the beveled edge for a better tear. Beveled edge for a better tear. Okay. So what I think I'm going to do is put some glue on here and then um, attach it to this side and then add more glue and then trim around it. That's my plan. Okay. So... You can see how off it is right here. It's way wider than right here. And there is going to be layers and layers of paper um, because we've got four layers of the bag right now, so I'm not really worried about um, reinforcing it too much. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over make sure that this is the top yeah and save myself some cutting by aligning it on this edge over here and at the top here just like that and I am going to be sewing around the entire thing so Okay, yeah, I think that will be more than sufficient. All right, so I'm going to trim this piece off carefully. I would say not to cut the bag, but it if you accidentally cut the bag, it's not going to matter. We're going to sew around this entire entire project. Okay, see I cut the bag on that one. I'm going to save these scraps for the moment. I should have cleaned up for my last project before I started a new one, but I'm still working on that last loaded paper bag. I should have done it over the weekend, but I didn't. 
Okay, so let's see, this is to here. Don't want to go down too far because I don't want to glue the bag or, excuse me, the pocket shut. I think I may have a little excess over here, but didn't do too bad. So get that off of there. Here we go. I like it already. I do want to get this off. I cut a little piece off of here so that I could have a, a clean edge because it, it really gets it really gets nasty on the corners. If anyone knows a way to clean that off, let me know. I was thinking if we had when we were kids, we used to clean our erasers on our chair because our chairs were textured our, uh, in our classroom. And I don't have anything of that texture that I can rub. That's what I was thinking I needed. Okay, so that's it for the inside, okay? Because this is going to come up, and we will be sewing around that. So the inside's good. All right, so let's do, um, let's go ahead and do this side. Um, let's see. That's kind of pretty. And that butterfly would get cut off. Let's try something that has a little less. This will match that flower there. Let's do this one. Okay, so I'm going to do the same kind of thing. This is the top over here. I'm going to add the glue here. And I'm not worried about the um, the glue with the sewing machine because by the time I get over there to sew, the glue is going to be dry. Okay. So I'm going to come up to this corner, line it up the best I can, just like that. Okay. I am going to go ahead and trim this. This time I really don't want to cut the bag. There we go. I just trim it first so I know how far down to glue. I can always trim it up a little bit more later. So I didn't I didn't do too bad. I just need to go right along right along the edge here. And probably didn't even need to do that because of sewing it. But you do not have to sew this if you didn't want to. You could you could simply glue it. Okay. All right, so let's do this side. Now, what do we want on this side? Um, I was thinking I would want one piece, but I really need to do that and then this as a separate piece. So I'm going to be coming across here. I don't know if you can see that line, but um, to here which I believe it must be one of the original folds of the design. So I could do that or I can find something else that has those big pink roses on it again. I could do that. I'm just thinking if I do this I can take the bottom piece and put it on the top. So I might want to do it this way though because 
Um, that way this butterfly will be on there. Don't you think? Yeah. Okay. So, this is going to be a little trickier. I'm going to have to put the paper on top. Okay. But I want to come right along here. I'm not going to worry about that second butterfly. Just gonna line this up. Right along that line. I'm gonna take the hair out. We have um, a lot of girls in this house, so there is hair everywhere. My poor son and husband. <laughs> there we go. Now I should be able to turn this around and put this here. And then you won't notice as much. I, I was thinking I might put, um, I might put a piece of lace trim along there. So I'm not real concerned about the seam. Um, but I do want that butterfly. So let's do, let's glue it this way, and then trim that piece off. I hope everyone had a great weekend. Our weekends are pretty much the same anymore, since we don't can't go anywhere or do anything. California is still on lockdown, and I because I live in the Central Valley, we're like super, super high risk. I'm not going anywhere. I if I go out, I wear my mask. I'm there temp temporarily, not for an extended amount of time, because I. I try to, you know, do what they've asked of me. I want that butterfly right about there. So what I've been doing is binge watching uh, The Mentalist, which I did watch when it was originally on, um, but I've forgotten a lot of things. And it's funny when you watch these shows from a few years back, you start seeing, hey, that's so-and-so, and that's so-and-so. They're from this, and they're from that, and... It's like, wow, didn't know they were on there. Okay, so, um, I am, before I can trim that, I need to go ahead and fold this. So, I'm going to fold it on the original corner line there. So that makes it nice and thick. I hope my sewing machine can handle that. Okay, and then the next one down. I guess I should have done that a little bit different. just take your time enjoy the process um, it's a lot more fun when you are not in a rush you know I keep telling myself I a lot of people keep 
sending me messages saying, please add more things to your Etsy store, but I can only make so many journals at a time. <laughs> so, you know, I can only work so fast in the time I'm allotted. I would love to add more journals to the store, but uh, it is what it is. It's, um, it's slow going. And I don't want to get to the place where I don't enjoy it anymore. You know what I mean? Um, if I can't enjoy the process, then it's not worth it to me. Okay, so we need to trim off this side over here and this side over here. I do appreciate those of you who have purchased over the weekend. Clean, help me clean out my store a little bit. I don't have an awful lot in there, but I do have a few things. So I'm not going to glue it together yet because I want to sew along this edge. I'm, you could keep this as a pocket if you wanted, um, but I'm not. I'm going to seal it because I like the texture there. So um, the next thing I need to do then is uh, Mod Podge. Um, I think I'm going to ink it first though. So let's do that because some of it has the original uh, distressing and some does not so I want to go ahead and distress that and I will probably fast forward this part Okay, so um, I may have to ink it again after I sew it or whatever, but now I think it's ready to Mod Podge. So I'm going to start with the inside. I'll use my nonstick mat. I'm going to get this prepared, find my Mod Podge and a brush, and I'll be back. Okay, so I think Gina said. Was it, is it Gina? Oh gosh, I'm sorry, I've forgotten. Uh, Firefly Studio 67, I think she waxed hers because um, she was doing a bee theme journal. Um, I could be wrong, but that's what I thought. So I am going to go ahead and Mod Podge the whole inside piece, the pocket and everything, that'll just, <clears throat> excuse me, add some more uh, strength to it um, so that it's durable inside the pocket as well is out. And I am going to Mod Podge both sides and then I'll be back. Um, I've got it all Mod Podged, both sides, this side and this side. It feels wonderful. I just, I, I just love that feeling. Um, I do use the matte Mod Podge, and I don't have as much problems, um, as much problems, is that right? I don't have as many problems with it sticking. 
um, as I do with the gloss. Um, the only thing I would change, um, I made this pocket four inches and with this coming like this, this doesn't quite go down far enough for me. I don't like the way this looks. So I would either make the pocket four and a half inches next time, um, but what I decided to do was just take that out where I had it folded there um, and folded it back here a little further on the other side. So you can see I had it folded here and here, but when I put it together, I went ahead and folded it here. Now, I did not ink this piece before I Mod Podged it, so it's not going to be as dark. I did ink a little bit. You can tell the difference. This is before the Mod Podge, this is after. Uh, it does take the Mod Podge, it just doesn't, it's not as deep. Um, so that's how I'm going to do that uh, for this one, because I just didn't like the look of um, the way it was wrapping around when it was like this up here. I don't want to see all of this. So, basically, um, three quarters of an inch back from this flap is the first one, and then one inch is the second one if you do a four inch flap. So now, um, and I don't know if I said this or not because I started recording and it wasn't recording, um, I used the Matte Mod Podge, if I didn't say that, um, because it doesn't seem to stick to itself um, as badly as the glossy one. So, um, you can leave this pocket here. It is sturdy. Um, in fact, it goes all the way inside, you know. Um, it is sturdy with the Mod Podge, but I am not interested in the pocket. I'm just going to go ahead and sew across here. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sew across here. I'm just going to use a straight stitch. And then I'm going to fold this down and I am going to sew around the outside. In fact, I think I'm still going to go ahead and sew along the bottom. And then I'll figure out what size journal I want to tuck inside and that will be uh, what we do tomorrow. We'll find a journal to tuck inside. Okay, so let me go sew and I'll be back. So we've sewn around. Um, as you know, I've had issues with my sewing machine, but I'm not worried about it for this project because I think it looks cool. But it did knot up in a couple of places, and that's okay. This is a, a grungy, and the pocket is really, I mean, the whole thing is just really, really um, durable. It just, it just feels really good. So I'm going to put... Um, I'm going to put eyelet closure on this one, and let's see, I'll use my Tim Holtz centering ruler, and wow, this is exactly six inches. So, let me go back a little bit here, I probably want to come in at least a half an inch, so... That doesn't even look right, though. Um, it doesn't look centered to me, but I guess it is. So I've got three and a half. Well, let's see. Up this way? No. It's got to go this way. Yep. Okay. And I just want to put them about, you know, half an inch apart. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out three eighths for each one. I wonder if I can get that far with this. Yeah, I should be able to. It's adjustable. If not, I'll go as close as I can. So this doesn't want to write. Probably that Mod Podge. Okay. I think I can see that now. So we're going to do the 3 8 because that's the size eyelets I have. Well, 
that is back a little far. So I'm going to do, I'm going to put the dot at the top of the hole and go down. Just a smidge. There we go. And I had two eyelets sitting here somewhere. I'm going to use the black to match the trim. And I have the rose, um, the rose beige. Um, what do you call it? Seam binding that I will use. Yep, they split good. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to run this through each hole and tie a little half knot to keep it where I want it. Oops! This is what happens when you have the camera, you know, <laughs> about 16 inches. Yeah, maybe 14 and a half inches from the surface. Okay, so I'm just gonna make that in half and like I said I'm just gonna tie a half knot there. Like so. So it'll stay where I want. And then when we get the journal inside you can either wrap this around like so and tuck it under um, or you could you know wrap one around and then tie it I mean there's all there's all kinds of things you can do um, I would prefer just to wrap it around this way and tuck it under I'll probably put some charms maybe I can find some butterfly charms to put on the end of that and I think that would look really cute so that is our clutch part of this. So now we need to determine what size book we want to fit inside. So I'm going to stick my ruler right in here on the right, right way around. And I think, yeah, I think three and a half is about all we can get in here. So I'm going to go, let me write this down, three and a half. And basically, depending on the thickness, you can't go more than nine. So I think I'm going to go three and a half by eight and a half. So three and a half by eight and a half is where we'll start. And um, we'll um, get that put together tomorrow. Um, I've got some papers. I'll trim them down. Um, you could use the, probably use the TN size of this. Um, I'm just going to use the papers that I have uh, here because it's not going to be a very uh, big journal. Um, it's, uh, you know, only so much will fit inside. So it's not going to be full of all of our usual ephemera. So anyway, um, yeah, come back tomorrow and we'll finish up with this um, journal in the... Uh, paper bag? No. What is it called? Not so paper bag clutch. <laughs> Thanks for, oh. Thanks for watching. See you next time.